Metal Jesus and I'm back again with another pickups video. I'm gonna show you some of the games I've added to my collection over the last couple months. Now not all the games, but I've I've tried to pull out some of the highlights and there's a lot of stuff here, but as a, as a bonus for this, we're actually gonna go to Paris, France. Yes, we're gonna go to France this episode and you'll see why in a couple minutes. It should be pretty fun. So I have about 30 plus games I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna show the gameplay. It, it covers about 12 or 13 consoles, including two that are new to me. So that's gonna be pretty cool. And then at the end of this video, as a little bonus, I'm gonna show you some of the music I have added, uh, specifically in vinyl. And there's a bit of a surprise there as well. It's pretty cool. Let's take a look. Where to start? Where to start? I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna go big right out of the gate. This is a donation by a guy who lives in the Seattle area. His name's John Hoffman. He donated to me a inbox Panasonic 3DO. How freaking cool is that? I had never played a 3DO until just recently, and this was an awesome donation. He actually had several of them. Big fan of our podcast, and uh, he came by one night and dropped the sucker off. We hung out for a while. Thank you, Jonathan. It's awesome having a 3DO. And he also donated some games, and then I also collected some on my own. You have to, right? Including Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. I know nothing about this game other than a lot of people love it, and I'm really looking forward to this. Now, I'm not the biggest fighting game fan. Well, I shouldn't say that. I actually really like fighting games. I, I just, I'm just terrible at them. And uh, I've heard that this is one of the better ones to get into. Found this in a local game, uh, I guess this is Game Gurus that I found this, bought this, and uh, it's cool to own. And then I picked up some of these, which are, I guess, games that people recommend for the 3DO, Shockwave and Shockwave 2. These look like shooters with full motion video, and I'm becoming a guy who, <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm starting to appreciate full motion video from the 90s. I used to make fun of it, but I don't know. Now going back, I'm actually starting to really appreciate the cheesiness and just the fun, you know? So anyways, these games look pretty cool on the 3DO. So, so thank you, John, for that. Now for some random PlayStation 1 games, including a game here. I'm gonna blow this title. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's, maybe it's Gekio, Geekio, Shooting King. It kind of looks like a budget title, but it's surprisingly fun. And I think this is, is it's kind of a hidden gem. When you look online and you see people who have this game, it always seems to show up in, in hidden gem videos. And so uh, I snagged it at a really decent price. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really fun. Another game that shows up as a kind of a hidden gem for the PlayStation 1 is a game called Viewpoint. This is a, I guess it, it's almost like Zaxxon, but it, it's upgraded to be more, more intense. Very difficult game. Actually, the first couple times I tried playing this game, I could not beat the first level. Uh, so, so it has quite a bit of difficulty, but thankfully, if you memorize the patterns, you can get through it. And uh, th there's definitely a level of satisfaction when you, uh, when you start getting pretty far in this game, but pretty tough. I found this brand new. This was actually unopened when I bought it, which I thought was kind of fun. I added one lone GameCube game, and that is a Disney game. It's called The Haunted Mansion. And uh, the reason why I added this is because a lot of people consider this to be a hidden gem. And at some point in the future, I'd like to do a hidden gems video on the GameCube. And so I thought, well, I better take a look at this. And it's, it's not an expensive game. It's not a rare game. It's just one I think a lot of people overlook. A lot of you know that I recently added a Wii. And now is a great time to buy Wii titles because a lot of stores are blowing them out pretty cheap, including Ghost Squad. This is by the makers of uh, House of the Dead Overkill, which is a fantastic Lycan game. And this is just as much fun and even cheaper. Uh, I think I paid maybe three or four dollars for this game. A really fun, well-made Wii game and uh, just a blast. Also on the Wii, I picked up a Silent Hill game called Shattered Memories. Now, I was really looking forward to this game. This is. This is a game where, as far as I can tell, you you don't fight back. You, um, there's a lot of adventure elements to this, but then basically when there's enemies on the screen, the whole point is to get the hell out of there and try to survive. Now, I love the traditional aspects of this game. I love the fact that you use the Wii remote to look around like a flashlight. 
The running away from enemies part, I'm not I'm not so psyched on it. I find it really frustrating. So kind of need some help on this. I need to know if it gets better or, or what I'm doing wrong because it, it's kind of frustrating. A buddy of mine, Matt, recommended a, a Wii title that I was kind of like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, yeah, this is a total hidden gem. It's Disney Guilty Party. Supposedly this is a detective game. Um, it's got like 50 different mini games to it. I guess you're trying to solve some sort of mystery. It's almost like Clue or something. I don't know. So I haven't played it yet. It, it supports four players, a multiplayer. I guess it's a total party game. It may end up being like an I Hate You episode or something like that. So I don't know. I'll have to give it a go. But um, yeah, it's kind of cool to own this. I'm always looking for hidden gems on any system. And uh, this, is, this is pretty cool. One system I rarely talk about is the Nintendo DS. And... That's because I, I guess I'm more of a PSP guy, even though this is a really interesting console, but for whatever reason, I, I kind of gravitate towards a PSP. But the reason why I mention it is because I do always have a list of Nintendo DS games I'm looking for. If someone says a DS game's great, I would eventually like to add it. And so GameStop was having a sale on buy two, get one free. So I, I finally did add some to my collection, including uh, P-Cross 3D, which is a really interesting puzzle game. And um, it's definitely a brain teaser. There's 365 puzzles in this and it starts off easy and it can get pretty tough. You, you really have to kind of slow down, take your time, use logic. But uh, I played this for several hours the other night and actually really enjoyed it quite a bit. Another game that a lot of people recommend and I was happy to get it on the, the DS is called Hotel Desk Room. 215. I've heard a lot of great things about this. Um, I played it a little bit. I love the art style of this. I love the fact that you hold the DS like an open book when you play this. Um, the, the film noir style of this just looks awesome. So this was cool to add to my collection. And then my free game I took, it's a platformer called Exit DS. Now I think this was also a PC flash game. And I think it's been actually out on a lot of different systems, even maybe the PSP. Um, played a little bit about of this and it's it's okay. It's not blowing me away yet. Um, kind of reminds me of Flashback a little bit. Uh, but um, you know, it, it's cool, you know, and it was free. A couple weeks ago, a good friend of mine, Reggie, came over for the PlayStation 1 Hidden Gems. And when he was over here, he noticed I don't have a Neo Geo Pocket Color. And he was like, do you want one? He has several of these and this one happened to be extra just laying around so he donated it to me this is really cool to own i've never played one before and uh, i tell you what i love i love this this thumbstick right here it's awesome so he donated a neo geo pocket color and he in included a couple games to get me started including metal slug first mission i love metal slug played a bunch of this and it's fantastic i heard second mission's even better so i'm going to be adding that he included a couple Pac-Man games here. I'm not sure the difference between them. I, I suspect one of them's color and one of them's not. And then also Puzzle Bobble Mini. Little puzzle game here. Very cool to own that. Thanks, Reggie. I have been on the lookout for one particular game for the Sega Saturn for a long time. It's not particularly rare, but it is hard to find in the wild. And uh, I didn't want to pay eBay prices for it. Finally found a copy of Galactic Attack. I've heard so many great things about this shoot 'em up and uh, it's nice to finally have this in my collection and I was not disappointed. I played it a ton and love me some shoot 'em ups and finally have this in my collection. Very happy. Also, I just picked up a random game. I didn't know if it was any good or not. Just happened to see it in the wild and it's called Solar Eclipse. Looks like, uh, I assume, I haven't played it yet, but I'll probably play it for capturing footage. Looks like a shooter, maybe in space or something like that. Looks like it's got, you know, bad full motion video, bad or good, I have no idea, but uh, has full motion video, so that'll be pretty fun. And uh, looking forward to playing a bit of this on the Sega Saturn. A fan of my channel, his name is Valentin, sent me a box of games and some really cool stuff in there. I wanna show a couple of them. He completed my Star Wars collection on the Super Nintendo. So I have Super Star Wars, and then I also have uh, Super Empire Strikes Back. Played a bunch of these, and hard as hell, but very cool, very unique. And he also included a game I wanted to highlight in there. This is an Elder Scrolls adventure game that I had I, th I had heard of it, but I didn't know anything about it. It's called Red Guard. Again, it's part of the Elder Scrolls world, I guess, but I think it may be, 
Maybe it's about pirates or something. I have no idea. So I don't know. I was actually having a problem trying to get it to run on my Windows XP machine. I think I might need a patch or something. I have no idea. What's cool about it though, is that it comes with a map and this map, when it folds out, it actually has burned corners on it. And it doesn't look like it was manufactured. It looks like they really were burned. Like it was like a real pirate map. It's actually pretty neat. So I wanna thank him for sending those to me. I love my PlayStation 2. And anytime I find some games out in the wild that I don't have, I'm excited to add them, including Klonoa 2. This game is, it's pretty highly sought after. I mean, it's not like really expensive, but it's one of the platforming games that a lot of people try to find. And I was happy to find a copy of this. I actually found two copies in a local store and uh, snagged this up, played a ton of it, super fun. Um, if you've never played the Klonoa games, you definitely gotta give them a try because they're really, really well made. Also picked up a racing game that sounded very familiar. Like I played it, maybe I'd reviewed it years ago, but I just didn't remember. It's called Shocks. And this is an EA game. And I I was like, wow, this is actually a decent game. I mean, it's not, it's not gonna blow you away, but it's really well made and a ton of fun. So a little bit of a hidden gem on, on the PS2 if you like racing games. And then I found a copy of episode two of Xenosaga. Now, I played this originally when it first came out and I really wasn't impressed. I mean, I liked the first game quite a bit. They changed some things about the second that I wasn't crazy about, but I want to get it again. I traded it years ago because I really liked the third game and I kind of want to get the series again. So, need a second one and I'm looking for the third. I added a couple original Xbox games, including a hidden gem that a lot of people like called Urban Chaos Riot Response. This is a first person shooter that I've gotten a ton of feedback saying you need to own this game. It's way better than it looks because it looks like a total, I don't know, like looks like a budget title, right? But supposedly people love this game. I actually played a little bit just to capture footage and I was like, yeah, this is actually a pretty well made game. So very cool. I can't wait to play a ton of this. And then I picked up Silent Hill for The Room. Now, some people love this game, other people not so much. I played it a little bit for, for a couple hours and I actually thought it was pretty decent. I mean, you start off the beginning of the game in first person mode in this room and you're stuck in it and then you find ways to get out of the room, to kind of sneak out of it. And then it turns into a more traditional Silent Hill game. Uh, the one bummer that I think about this is that it doesn't appear you can save at all unless you are in the room, which is pretty tough because you can spend a lot of time outside of it and get your ass kicked in combat and you would have to start over. And that's at least how it appears to be. So I'm hoping that's not the case, but regardless of which, it seems creepy and weird and that's right up my alley. So cool to own that. Now, I mentioned that we were gonna go to Paris, France in this video. Well, the reason for that is is because my good buddy, Drunken Master Paul, for his anniversary, him and his wife went over to Europe for, I, gosh, like three, three weeks, something like that. They toured all over the place. And he was on the lookout for games. Ta-da! So, Drunken Master Paul here. My whirlwind trip throughout Europe, and we are in Paris, and we sought out the retro game shop. Now, unfortunately, the audio from his cell phone was, was not great that day. So I'm just gonna show you a couple seconds here of this really cool shop that Paul found in downtown Paris. Now, he was actually looking for quite a while to find a gift to bring back to me. And this was the only shop that he could find in all of Paris, which is kind of amazing considering how big that city is. However, he struck gold because this place is piled high with just random stuff. This is my favorite kind of store where you just have no idea what you're gonna find next. And he knew that I like shooters, so he found me a cool one. So here's a game that he found for me. This is Sprig Empowered. This is a Super Famicom game. And uh, it's a shooter. It's a mech shooter, it's pretty cool. And I don't think this came out in North America. Kind of cool to own this. Now, in order for me to play Super Famicom games, because I don't own one, uh, I just used the Retron 3 and it works really well. Actually, it has S video out, so the quality is actually pretty high. So, thanks again, Paul. I appreciate it. I got an email from a fan of my channel. His name's Ryan, and he was like, dude, do you want a box of PC games? I'm like, sure, that sounds pretty cool. I have a lot of PC games, but I don't have a lot from the early 2000s. And uh, he sent a box of 26 PC games. Now, I'd love to go through all of these, 
but you know, we just don't have the time. A lot of them I have never played before. Um, he also included in there just a lot of games that I have maybe on consoles, but not the PC versions like Tony Hawk or the Grand Theft Auto games. That's really cool. But there are definitely some really awesome games in there, including Kingpin. Now, when I did uh, was Forgotten First Person Shooters, a lot of people were like, dude, you gotta include Kingpin. Well, now I have a copy. This is a really cool game. I played a, a, quite a bit of it. It's built on the Quake 2 engine. And uh, at its time, it was pretty controversial. And I think even today it might still be quite controversial. It also includes music from Cypress Hill. Very cool to own that. A little hidden gem that he included in there. I think it's a free game from Best Buy, but it's a shooter called Star Defender. Hadn't heard of this. It's, it's kind of like Galaga where, or maybe like Phoenix, some of those classic games, but it just, it looks, it's definitely upgraded graphically. Controls really well. I actually played quite a bit of it. This is a really fun game. Uh, then he also included some other games in here that people, I guess like, haven't played it yet. These are first person shooter, shooters called uh, Mortar. Mortar one and two and a bunch of expansion packs. Just a ton of great stuff in that box. So thanks very much, Ryan. I really appreciate it. Another fan of my channel, Sean, contacted me. He was like, dude, I've got some original NES games and a couple other things to send you. Do you want them? I was like, sure, that's cool. So on the original NES, he sent me Ninja Gaiden 2. Didn't own this. And the original Ninja Gaiden, I suck at pretty hard. I'm not sure if this is better or not, but man, that label's beautiful. Such a cool looking, the Dark Sword of Chaos. This looks awesome. So he sent that and also a copy of Dragon Warrior 2. Awesome to own this. I think there's four Dragon Warrior games, right? I have the first one, now the second one. And then he also included a copy of a game I'm in. <laughs> and uh, it was cool to get this, Shivers 2. This is a Sierra game. Now, the story of this game is, is that when I was working at Sierra, I was working in tech support. And I, you know, like now I have long hair and a, a, a black leather jacket. And the producer contacted me and he was like, you know, we need somebody to be in this game. And he knew I could play guitar and this game is all about this band that gets lost and you, the player, are trying to, to figure out what happened to the band. And the band recorded music videos as clues. And so I play the, the, the guitarist in the band. So when you play this game and you see, I think my, my, the name of my character is Dave. Uh, that's me. And so anyways, thanks very much for sending this to me. That's so awesome. So that's just some of the games I've had over the last couple months, but I want to show some of the music that I've added as well. A lot of people collect vinyl, and I uh, thought that might be kind of fun, including two Dio albums here, The Last in Line and also Holy Diver. Man, these album covers just look freaking awesome. They're so evil looking, it's so killer. Some great songs on here like We Rock, The Last in Line, Stand Up and Shout, Holy Diver. Lots of great stuff on here. So two Dio albums. I also added two Iron Maiden albums, a classic that I didn't own on vinyl, or maybe I did at one point and lost it. Um, but that is The Number of the Beast, one of my favorite album covers of all time. I love how there's a little dude here who's being manipulated by the devil, who's been being manipulated by Eddie, which is such a funny uh, album cover. This is one of my favorite Iron Maiden albums. I mean, uh, Children of the Damned, 22 uh, Acacia Avenue, Number of the Beast, Hallowed Be Thy Name, classic. And then in the same record store, somebody must have brought their entire Iron Maiden collection because there were a ton to choose from. I could have spent a couple hundred dollars. And in there was a bunch of uh, colored vinyl. So this is Aces High and it's got this classic Eddie on here. And I believe the other side is live. And then nothing says 80s hair metal quite like the original Poison album. Look what the cat dragged in. Wow. <laughs> uh, that album cover is something special. It's just, uh, I mean, those chicks are so hot, aren't they? So, so hot. I don't know, you know, anytime I, I run across this, this cheesy 80s hair metal stuff, I just have to add it to my collection, especially if it's not too expensive. And then finally, I want to show you something pretty neat. A local artist takes old, old records, like old jazz records and country western albums, and he'll paint things on them like this Mario. This was custom made for me, uh, specifically for my game room, which I thought was pretty neat. And it's just beautiful. I mean, it's awesome looking. So this is a really neat addition to my game room. 
So that's some of the things I've added to my game room over the last couple months. I really, really appreciate the people who donate to, to my channel and to my game room. It's so nice that you do that. It's so awesome. Your, your games have come to a good place and uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm really humbled by that. Thank you very much. As always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel and thanks for subscribing. Take care.